Hello everyone, I'm Ben. Uh, I kind of feel a little nerdy because after talking about mixtapes, it's kind of a cool thing. I'm actually going to talk about a book. <laughs> um, I read this book uh, last spring by Andy Hargraves and Michael Fullan about professional capital, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. I met Andy Hargraves actually in the spring, and I was pretty, I had a sort of like a Beyonce moment, and I was like, oh my god, it's Andy! <laughs> and uh, that's just, I guess, what I get excited about. But the thing I want to tell you about, the experience I want to talk about today, wasn't provided by Andy, it was provided by this guy. His name's Jaska Steiner, and he's a Swiss artist. Before I get into that experience, I want to tell you a little bit about professional capital. Professional capital is actually made up of three things, according to Fullen and Hargraves. Human capital, social capital, and decisional capital. Now, human capital is the knowledge and skills we have as an individual. And we can increase this by learning new things. Decisional capital is like the essence of being a professional and being able to make judgments. We exercise this all the time, especially as educators. How do we approach a new lesson with students? We make judgments. Now the third piece is social capital. And this was actually initially put forth by James, uh, an economist, James Lowry, in the 70s, and then furthered by James Coleman, and they said that the essence of social capital exists in the relations between people. And what Hargraves and Fullen argue is that when you take social capital and you add it to decisional and human capital, it acts as a multiplier. And you're able to create things you wouldn't otherwise be able to. OK. Now, let's talk about something fun, tattoos. So in the spring, right around the time I read this book, this came across my Instagram feed. And I was thinking about getting a new tattoo. And what this, when I noticed this, what I saw was everything I wanted in a tattoo. I saw really clean lines, expert design, tessellations, and only one color, or shades of one color. So I looked further into the work, and I thought, everything this guy does represents what I want. So I shot him a message, and I said, hey, would you be willing to give me a tattoo? And he said, sure. I'm in town for a week. Sent me a link to a PayPal account I deposited, set up an appointment. He said, take some, tat some pictures of your own tattoos, send them to me, and I'll work on something. So I was eagerly waiting. The day came. I went over. He pulled me in as the Airbnb he was staying at, showed me what he had, and I was, my stomach dropped. It was nothing like I wanted. And I felt very vulnerable at this moment. How could I tell this world-famous tattoo artist I didn't like what he had done? He had put his time and effort into this. I remember what Dan Coyle said, though. In order to build trust, you must first be vulnerable. So I said, Jaska, I don't like this. He said, well, what don't you like about it? And I said, pretty much everything. <laughs> and he said, well, what do you want? And I couldn't articulate, actually, what I did want. And it was his turn to be vulnerable. He said, he could have been, who is this guy wasting my time? I know what I'm doing. And he doesn't even know what he wants, but he's telling me he doesn't like what I've done. So he chose to be vulnerable. We entered into this relationship. And we worked together over six hours on a design. We both brought our human capital, our knowledge and skills, our decisional capital, our ability to make decisions and judgments. And together, we created this design. Because social capital allows you to have access to other people's knowledge, and together you create something greater than the sum of the parts. So we came up with this design. Then came the art of actually getting the tattoo, which is a whole other talk. It's actually super complex when you're looking at tessellating a design on an arm, which actually isn't a cylinder. It gets bigger to smaller, and it has to line up perfectly. You can tell I'm a little geeked out on this. So 12 hours later, I have this beautiful piece of art that I helped create that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. So you're thinking, what does that have to do with this conference? Well, we're here to develop our human capital. We're here to learn new things. You made a judgment to actually be here. And together, the relationships we build are creating this social capital. Now, vulnerability is the initial thing that we need to do to actually get social capital to begin. 
So if I was to boil this down into four words, it's together we are better. Now as we go back to our, our schools and we work with our students, our other educators, parents, other people in our community, remember that space between us, those relationships we foster, that's where the social capital lives. That's where we can make something greater than we can by ourselves. So, let's work together, create something cool.